Good morning all. Today we are going to start our 10th chapter Algorithms and Flowchart. Before discussing about the algorithms and flowchart, let's discuss an example. Here I am going to explain how to prepare a cup of tea in a step by step procedure. So here the first step for preparing a cup of tea is put half a cup of water in a pan. And the second step we have to put milk in the same pan. And third step is we have to light the burner of the gas stove. And step number four, put the pan over the flame. After that, we are going to step number five, which is we have to wait for two to three minutes to boil the mix of water and milk. Step number six, we have to add tea powder and sugar to the mix of water and milk. Step number seven, we have to switch off the burner. And the final step is filter the tea in a cup. Here I have explained how to prepare a cup of tea. But one difference is that I have explained each of the process in different steps. So this step by step instructions of performing a task to get a work done is called algorithm. And algorithms are used to define steps for calculation as well as processing of data. But before writing an algorithm, we have to learn some basic terms related to an algorithm. Here we are going to discuss about two basic terms. The first one is input or read. This term is used when the computer has to ask for some data. When we compare with the above example, for making a cup of tea, the inputs are milk, water, sugar, tea powder. So these are the inputs. And the second term is print or write. It is used when the computer has to give the result. When we compare with the above example, the result of the process of making tea is the tea. So these are the two terms. Now let's check one more example how to calculate the sum of two numbers. So here we are going to write the algorithm for calculating the sum of two numbers. So the first step is we have to read the first number. So here the first number is 30. So step number 1 read the first number 30. And our step number 2 is we have to read the second number. So it is read the second number 44. Now we have got the two inputs 30 and 44. Our step number 3 is we have to find out the sum of the two numbers. So we have to add 30 and 44 together. That is step number 3. After finding out the sum, we have to get the result. So step number 4 is print the result 74. So that is the second term called print or write. So this is how we can write the algorithm for calculating the sum of two numbers. Did you understand what is algorithm now? Now let's discuss about flowchart. The pictorial representation of an algorithm is called flowchart. So in flowchart, each step is represented in the form of geometrical shape. So for drawing a flowchart, we can use various geometrical shapes and each shape represents a particular use. Okay, for input, write, read, process, there are various geometrical shapes we can use. And all these shapes are connected using arrows, which show the sequence of flow of steps in the algorithm. So now we have to understand flowchart means the pictorial representation of an algorithm. Each step explained in an algorithm we can pictorically represent by using the flowchart. Now let's check what are the shapes we can use in a flowchart. So there are basically five shapes we can use in a flowchart. And the first shape is called oval or rounded rectangle. The rounded rectangle is known as start or stop box in flowchart, which is used to show the start and end of a flowchart. So whenever we are starting a flowchart and ending a flowchart, we have to draw a oval shape. And our second shape name is rectangle. Rectangle is also known as process box which is used to show various processes or actions in a algorithm. Okay, and our third shape name is parallelogram. 
parallelogram is also known as input or output box which is used to show whether a data is a input or output in the previous example of adding two numbers we have given two numbers as the input so that can be represent by using the parallelogram okay and our fourth shape name is diamond diamond is a decision box it's used when we need to select between two options and commonly it is used in the case of yes or no and finally we have one more shape which is arrow so the flow of line we can represent by using the arrow we can connect each of the shapes by using the arrow okay so it is used to connect different shapes in a flow chart and also it indicate the direction of the flow chart here is an example of the flow chart of adding two numbers so first we have to give the start the start is represented by the rounded rectangle so just after start we have to read two numbers for adding two numbers we have to read two numbers so first we have read number 30 and second one 44 so reading two numbers should be represent with parallelogram because these 30 and 44 are the inputs then just after reading 30 and 44 we have to find out the sum of 30 and 44 which should be represent in a rectangle box because it is a process adding two number is a process so that should be represent in a rectangle so after finding out the result we have to print it so both the input and the output we should represent with the help of parallelogram so we have to use parallelogram for reading 30 44 and also for printing the 74 and finally we have to use the rounded rectangle for indicating the end of the flow chart initially we have discussed an algorithm for preparing a cup of tea so here is the flow chart of the same so in this flow chart we have explained each of the steps we have already described in that algorithm so first we have given the start of the flow chart then second one is put water into the pan and third one put milk into the pan so put water and put milk are two inputs so that we have represented with the help of parallelogram then the next step is light the burner that we have represented with the rectangle because it is a process lighting the burner is a process and our next step is put the pan over the flame that also an input because we are putting the pan on the flame is an input so we have to represent with the help of parallelogram and the next step is boiling the water and milk mix that is a process boiling means a process so we have used the rectangle shape after that adding tea powder and sugar we are going to add so it's a input always we should use parallelogram for the input so we have used the parallelogram for add tea powder and sugar our next step is off the burner which is a process next step is filter the tea so filtering the tea is a process so we have used the rectangle for the process and to show the end of the flow chart we have used the stop so this is how we can represent the flow chart of preparing a cup of tea okay for each of the input and output we should use parallelogram and for the process we have to use the rectangle shape now we can check what are the rules for drawing the flow chart whenever we are drawing the flow chart we have to mainly follow three rules the first rule is the direction of the flow in a flow chart is either from top to bottom or from left to right in two ways we can draw the arrow shape either from top to bottom or left to right second one the arrow head are used to indicate the direction of the flow of action so every time whenever we are using the arrow the head of the arrow indicate the flow and the third rule a flow chart should have only one start and one stop box so in the initial position we have to give the start and finally only we have to use the stop so these are the three rules we have to follow whenever we are drawing the flow chart so always the flow of the chart should from the top to bottom or left to right in the flow chart of 
preparing a cup of tea you can see both the top to bottom and the left to right have used so today we have discussed about algorithm and flowchart the step by step instruction of performing a task to get a work done is called an algorithm so always we have to mention each step for mentioning the algorithm and also the pictorial representation of an algorithm is known as flowchart and also you have to study what are the different shapes we can use to draw a flowchart